I think an influencer has a certain confidence that probably not many people have, that they know that what they're doing is the right thing because they're comfortable in it. To me, an influencer is somebody who has a different way of thinking and a different way of expressing themselves. Uh, it could be in music, it could be in art, it could be in sports. There's a group of people that are really just early adopters that really embrace all forms of culture. Those are the people that everyone else ends up paying attention to, uh, whether it's because they're creative and they invent things or they can recognize uh, what the next thing is and are able to uh, popularize it earlier. Someone who is uh, well respected and someone who um, their, whose opinion is very valued. Is a person who can take an idea, a brand, a concept that is not in the mainstream's consciousness and can bring it to mainstream consciousness. I think an influencer, um, just you know, by virtue of the definition, you know, somebody that other people listen to and react to. Right, so they listen to what they say, um, they have a certain amount of trust to what they say, and then they, they react to it. And the first one that comes to mind is Jay-Z. I think in America, probably like the most iconic version of what an influencer is. Starting from shitty neighborhood and, and becoming a super mega star and stay pretty much true to yourself the whole way. You can really sort of like change markets. You see someone like Jay-Z, wear his Yankee cap and, and really make a definitive statement. That's extremely powerful. Being able to travel around, we were talking about this earlier, traveling around the country with Notorious B.I.G., you know, with Biggie, and seeing how his persona, his influence on culture, um, his influence on communities, on, on kids, on his peers was incredible. This type of event is usually uh, reserved for political and religious leaders. This is an historical moment here right now. You look at a guy like a friend of mine, Hiroshi Fujiwara in Tokyo, who's another really incredible influencer, but he's different because he doesn't do it with his mouth. He doesn't speak. He doesn't say things. He does it by living, like his actions, right? So that's like a whole other way of, of influencing people. I think that most of the new styles and, and the new sort of trends and things come from the younger creative class uh, simply because they have to figure out ways to present themselves the way they want to present themselves and they're broke so they you know are the ones that are you know over the years and you know whether it's musicians or, or artists or whoever who have created new styles whether it's punk or new wave or you know the hip-hop style or whatever it is hip-hop was always very much self aware, like aware of how your hair was, how your jeans hung, what kind of sneakers you had. So I think that that during my high school years that, that had a big influence on me stylistically. My name is Craig. Uh, I'm from New York and I don't really take fashion very seriously. I just uh, look on the floor, whatever I have, whatever I'm ready to wear, I just throw on. My name is Kara and um, I live here in New York. I'm a fashion designer and I actually design an accessory that's a collar attached to a tie for men and for women. And I love an androgynous look. So anything men's wear combined with women's wear is, is what I like to throw on. So I wear the same kind of thing every single day. Bill Cunningham is really the most well-known of, of street style photographers. He was the first one to ever do it. I mean, you know, the Sartorialist Listen is one of his biggest influences. Uh, you know, and I think that the reason that those, that those sorts of sites and, and, and like the idea of every man street style has gotten so popular is for a lot of the same reasons that reality television is popular, for a lot of the same reasons that blogs in and of themselves are popular, not just style blogs. Um, and it's because people uh, get great satisfaction out of seeing their peers uh, presented in that sort of context. You know, right now we're in the Lower East Side, um, downtown Manhattan. This is where I live, this is where I operate, this is where I work. My store is here, and uh, 
It's dope. I love this neighborhood because it's really like the last remaining neighborhood left in New York. It's like really chill, laid back. Um, yet I feel like culturally we're, we're in the center of it all. LES is dope because historically, you know, from back in the day, LES was like where um, immigrants would come into town from Ellis Island. They would all migrate here in the Lower East Side. So from the beginning of time of New York City history, it was always a melting pot, you know, all these immigrants, all these different cultures. And because of that, the rents were always low too. And now, because the rents were lower, all the creatives and all the um, young people would come here, start their business here, start their art gallery here and whatnot, and it became a really creative melting pot as well. So now what you have is a really nice community of creative people doing different things, um, and it's just a dope vibe. The tipping point is the biography of an idea. And the idea is very simple. Ideas and products and messages and behaviors spread just like viruses do. say what that exact point is but you know you look at you know the influence and, and the way culture spreads it usually starts in a certain city and then spreads globally from there it, it's not something that you can just pinpoint that's the moment where that happened going from my personal experiences I always used to love going to a club with vinyl you know now it's everybody's playing off of Serato or mp3s off of their computer but we used to take vinyl records to DJs in a club and it would be a record that had never been heard before there was no file sharing back in the day and you could see the crowd react and then you knew people were going leaving that club that night looking for that record telling their friends about that record and you would see kind of the seeds being planted and then all of a sudden you start seeing the dots being connected from New York to Miami to the Bay Area. There's Hong Kong, there's London, there's Tokyo, there's Paris, there's Berlin. You know, there's, there's more than you can name and each one has its own specific flavor. For us it's a quick thing, right? When you look at trends and how trends develop and how they are born and how they die, it's like fast, super, super fast, and, and as time goes on, it becomes faster and faster. You know, when something becomes mass, or when something becomes liked by a lot of people, it's not cool for them anymore, right? So you have that constant battle, like, do I want to stay, like, really small and cool, or do I want to, like, be big and have a lot of people be affected by my stuff? Once you kind of get to that level, um, and you're sort of tapped by corporations, then you sort of lose your ability to um, actually be in touch with what's going on. You're, you're reacting to sort of secondary information. I think um, brands are established through consistency by doing great things. It's not necessarily that a brand ties themselves to one individual. I, you know, you can't fake it, you can't create like this movement you know overnight it's not about one individual or a brand paying money to one single person and saying hey can you wear our product can you come up with an idea can you create something it, it's about brands really embracing a culture and a scene and empowering it and, and creating a true partnership where you know the whole concept of influencers has become ridiculous and, and out of control is that you have some of these mainstream brands thinking that they can co-opt the culture and go into Williamsburg and just embrace you know a, a certain culture and you know find a, a trend that, that that's where it's gotten so out of control and out of proportion sometimes it's just really random places that you end up going to and sort of feeling in, inspired the places where people assemble based on passion, I think are usually the places where you see the most influence. The South by Southwest, the Coachellas, the Glastonbury's. Bonnaroo is another great example of uh, a live music uh, event that's great. TED uh, is amazing. Uh, it's amazing because the promise of when you hear something at TED, you hear it for the first time. Mostly the foundation probably starts 
from your family, yeah, and then those are the people that you, you are around the most. First and foremost are my parents. They've been incredible. Um, my, my father, God bless him, hard-nosed kid from Brooklyn, built a trucking company in East New York, Brooklyn, um, 50 years of doing his own business, um, full of integrity, full of honesty and transparency, um, and busted his ass. I mean, worked hard. When I met Minya and Adina, my business partners, who were very like-minded, you know, I think the three of us coming together really, um, and we really inspired each other. It's been over six years, and we continue to, you know, go on that path and we started as a service agency and now we've launched trade shows and we have a million other ideas. I'm a big runner. I love to run. I'm a big marathoner and I take a lot of in inspiration from some of the elite athletes, you know, some of the great Kenyan and Ethiopian runners, you know, they have nothing and, and they literally learn to run from such a young age and can really propel themselves, you know, out of Africa and to, to become on a global stage. I mean, to me, there's something like beautiful about that. If you look at someone like a Steve McQueen or if you look at somebody like the Rat Pack or if you look at somebody like Paul Newman or any of those people, they were really canonized after many, many years in the, in the spotlight. I mean, I definitely think that Paul Newman is probably the best dressed man of all times. Uh, he looked great in everything. He's got the Daytona watch named after him. He looked great in army gear. He looked great in a suit. Um, I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll never be a Paul Newman, but if I was going to want to look like anybody, it would probably be him. When you get to a certain place, if someone has helped you get to where you are, you must help identify younger talent and be the mentor for somebody else. I think influence is all relative. It's all relative to your personal taste, to what you like and who you look at, you know. What I'm influenced by is incredibly different by what you're influenced by. There's not a rule book, there's not a manual, there's something inside saying, this is, this is right, you know, when I sketch this or when I put these two fabric, fabrics together, like, that feels right for me. Um, so real cool shit is when people aren't looking at you, you know, like when nobody's looking, when the camera's off, like what are you made of when you're by yourself? That's kind of like the essence of cool for me. It's an interesting time to be involved in style and to be involved in the media. You can look at Twitter, you can get a text message from a friend, you can read, read a, a magazine, look at a website, you can go to see a show. I mean, there's so many different touch points in our lives that affect us. And the importance of the consumer is really becoming paramount again, uh, where it maybe wasn't for a while, but since people are so readily able to express themselves and, and show what they're feeling to massive amounts of people, uh, it, you know, it really does influence the establishment. Who knows where that will eventually lead? None of us do. So it's really an exciting time. And to, to see who the icons of this new era are going to be, I mean, I think we got to wait and see.